Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's summer, so we are in my home library, not the school today, uh, but I am a high school librarian. My name is Megan Music. That's the reason for my channel name. I keep needing to explain that. Music with a K, anyway. <laughs> today, we're gonna talk about all the books I read in June. I say all, it's like four, but the fact that I actually got to read some because the baby is napping really well and I'm out of school for the summer, so I got to read four books, and I'm gonna tell you some books that I want to read for July. So for each of these books, I wanna give you some pros and cons. Well, I'll give you a brief summary, too. Too. brief summary pros and cons of each and then I'll give you my overall rating. So the first book that I read was A Darker Shade of Magic. Actually I don't know if it was the first book honestly the order of these is smallest to largest because that's how they're stacked. <laughs> so the smallest book I read like literally the size of it how tall and wide it is I guess um is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Uh, spoiler alert this is also the best book I read this year. This book was amazing and I highly recommend everyone read it the sequels, not so much. Honestly, this could be a standalone. There's no reason for this to be a series, but it is. It's called the Shades of Magic Trilogy. You've probably heard of it, so you should probably just skip this because I feel like most people know about this series, but it's about time travel, not time traveling, gosh, it's about traveling to different Londons. So there's Grey London, that's our normal boring London that has no magic. There's Red London, which is thriving with magic. That's where one of the main characters lives. He's a sort of like a magician but he's really powerful and he's like one of the last of his kind who can travel to these different worlds and open doors between them and then and his name's Kel by the way and then you have White London which is like starved for magic and wants their magic back and then you have Black London which destroyed itself a long time ago because it was overrun by kind of like dark magic. This book follows mostly Kel, but also a character named Lila Bard. Some characters, some people like her, some don't. I think she's just okay. The audiobook narrator does some really weird voice for her, like this really like, I'm Lila Bard. And you're like, what kind of weird voice is that? Anyway, I actually enjoyed the audiobook except for that part, but she wants to be a pirate and she is very much not like other girls and they want you to know that, which is kind of annoying, but you know, Mm, smells too new. So she runs into Kel eventually, meets him. She's from Grey London and knows nothing about magic and she sort of gets sucked into this high stakes adventure where they're um, you know kind of racing against the clock to do something that involves getting rid of some dark magic. So the pros of this book, it's super fast paced. It's really short. Um, the plot is amazing. I love the premise of the Four Londons. I think that is just wonderful and it you get so many little twists as you go that you're just you're hooked and you are on the edge of your seat the whole time. The cons would be the characters mostly. I really didn't feel connected to very many of them. It's still like I said the best book I think I've read this year but I didn't really I don't really care about Kel or Lila like they could be anybody. Um, it's more the plot that really was why I enjoyed this so much. Oh the writing was really good too. I forgot to mention the writing like that's definitely a pro. The writing style V.E. Schwab is a natural storyteller and it's amazing. And then overall I would give this book five out of five stars if I had to rank it based on stars. I didn't get time to use my call pile rating system. Well it's not mine. Somebody else came up with it but this is the system I usually use but I just knew that this would get five stars so it would be pointless not to rate it that way. So I won't spend too long on this one, but the next book I read was the sequel, A Gathering of Shadows. I say it's a sequel. I would not call it a sequel. I think Dark Shade of Magic could stand by itself. You don't need to read the other two. It's a story in itself. I would just say that this is more like a companion novel and it's like set in the same world. Um, it reminds me of Harry Potter because there's a tournament where two other countries come to the main country and that sounds like the Triwizard Tournament to me from Harry Potter. So... So you've still got Kel and Lila that you're following, but you also have a couple new characters, well, mostly just one, who is like the captain of the ship. He's a privateer. Uh, he's actually pretty cool. I'm not, I actually don't mind him as much as I do some of the other characters. And we have another point of view this time from Kel's brother, Rye, uh, from his point of view. Um, he's the prince and there's a lot going on with him too. But this book was really unnecessary and like nothing happens. Uh, the other one was so fast paced and short, but tons of stuff happened and this, this nothing happens. So I'm hoping that book three that I'm gonna be reading in July is gonna have a lot more that goes on in it because as much as I love the writing style of this, this was it was tough to get through it. Um, so stars wise, I would probably only give this one like two and a half stars. So another book I read in June, that I finished. I mean, I started reading it when the baby was born. So it's been a hot minute because he's almost five months old. So it took me a long time to get through this book. Maybe I would have liked it better had I not had to drag it out over the course of five months, only reading 10 or 20 pages at a, at a time in one sitting. Oh, why is the baby moving? Stop it, don't move, we're filming. <laughs> My husband's gone, so I'm watching the monitor. Stop squirming. Sorry if you hear the monitor. 
<laughs> okay, so The 10,000 Words of January by Alex E. Harrow. So, uh, Books with Brittany, she says that this is one of her favorite books of all time, and I don't really get it. Um, the writing, sure, was pretty. Uh, I want to do a full review on this one. There are some weird metaphors that are, they're so weird that it just throws you out of place. Like, you're like, what? Like, the this is not even in context about anything. Like, I, the metaphors were just crazy. Oh, no, the baby's head up, so we're gonna have to pause a little bit. Okay, let's pretend like this isn't hours later that I am now filming this because it's definitely not. Basically, this book is about a girl named January who realizes maybe her life isn't what she thought. Maybe her parents, um, she doesn't know who they are because she lives with this man in this like rich house, rich man in a big house. And she does this by reading a book that she finds in her like godfather, like the guy that's raising her, his house has this book in it that she's like, huh, like it's called The 10,000 Doors. And she starts to realize that maybe this book connects to her own life, which that might be the only cool premise, I suppose I would say. But um, everything else was kind of disappointing in it, honestly. So as far as the pros go, I mean, the writing is good. Um, the plot is, I mean, the concept is interesting, I suppose. But I think for me, it was mostly cons. Um, I didn't really find it. I don't know. There was just nothing that made me want to keep reading. I don't honestly know why I even finished it. it I guess it was just intriguing enough, but yeah, I mean, I don't even know how to put into words my thoughts. I'm going to have to really think about this one because it just took me so long to read it, which is probably part of my problem. If it hadn't taken me, taken me four months to read this, maybe I would have liked it a lot better. But as it is, I would say it's probably also maybe two and a half stars. The last book I read was actually really, really good. So Darker Shade of Magic, of course, was my favorite, but this one was right up there. I thought I would hate The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune because everybody talks about it. I'm not even gonna go through everything it's about. You know, there's an orphanage, kind of 1984-ish, where um, the guy works in a society, or this, this department, kind of reminds you of something from 1984, kind of also like the Ministry of Magic from Harry Potter. And he goes to this island, and here I'm telling you what it's about, and I just said I wasn't going to do that. But he goes to an island with magical children to investigate this orphanage, and he's a very by-the-books person, and you would not think that he would get attached to the kids there, but he does. The kids are all really unique and fascinating, and there's one that is really funny, and I can't tell you what his, like, unique magical ability is because it'll kind of spoil things, but it's really funny. Um, the whole book kind of reminded me, it says on the back that it's 1984 meets the Umbrella Academy with a pinch of Douglas Adams. I can see that, but it also reminded me of Harry Potter and especially Good Omens. I also thought this reminded me, there's one part to it that I also don't want to spoil or anything, but it reminds me quite a bit of Good Omens. And it was kind of heartwarming and but also, I just I really like the plot. The Master of the Orphanage, you start to wonder, I guess these are the pros, I'm telling you. The plot's good. <laughs> um, the Master of the Orphanage has a mystery and you don't know what's up with him. Is he a magical creature too? Is he mysterious? What's going on with him? Um, so I feel like the mystery kind of kept me going as well. It wasn't like crazy fast paced, but I mean, enough happened that I wanted to keep going. Uh, the writing was amazing. Um, it's just really to the point, like it wasn't the flowery language of 10,000 Doors of January. It's not the master storytelling of A Darker Shade of Magic, but it was just really straightforward and to the point. Kind of reminded me of the writing style of 1984. And overall, I would probably give this book, um, for me anyway, personally, I'd say 4.5 stars. Oh, and there really aren't any cons. Like, it's really, really good. So just to end, I want to talk about three books that I want to read. Um, one of them I have to read, so I know I'm going to read it in July. But I am going to read A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. I just started it a few days ago. I'm like maybe 20 pages in, if that. But I'm hoping that this is better than A Gathering of Shadows. It's the third in the, Darker, in the Shades of Magic trilogy. And it's obviously the largest. <laughs> They've gotten progressively larger here. I don't have very high hopes because I've heard that it's also kind of not necessary. And, you know, it's sort of a rehash of the same plot of the first book. So fingers crossed that maybe the second one was just a sort of filler kind of book, uh, middle book syndrome, and that this one really picks up and has a good ending. Another book that I wanted to read for a long time and finally just started is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I'm already on page 80. So fingers crossed that I can finish this book before going back to school, um, which is not till August 18th, except that teachers have to, and I'm, since I'm a librarian, I actually work 15 extra days throughout the year. So I'm basically gonna probably start working at the beginning of August. So I don't have long, but uh, I would definitely like to get this finished. And so far it's intriguing. Oh, and I didn't tell you anything about what it's about, but you probably already know that it's the First Law trilogy. This first book I'd heard from many people is um, not much basic, not, not much plot. It's very just focused on meeting all these characters. And I'm assuming they're all gonna come together because it's going back and forth right now between their different points of view. And there's like some magician or something who 
is gonna bring them together. I don't know. It doesn't really say much about it, but I mean, George R. R. Martin thinks it's good, and it's it's supposedly kind of like Game of Thrones, but with a little bit more dark humor. There's a character named Glockta who everyone loves, and so far he is pretty funny. He's a torturer who's also been tortured himself in the past, which, I mean, this sounds really dark, and normally I don't do torture scenes, but this guy is just funny, so... Uh, yeah, he's very, you know, cynical and just, you know, he's over it. So, like, he's done. So, he just, he doesn't care for anything. And the last book I'm going to read in July, because I have to, is Ray Bear by Jordan Ifuego. I don't ever know how to say these names. And I've talked about this book in a vlog, but um, I did just start it. I'm on page 20. I have to annotate and read this book for school. So, at my school, the English department assigns all the students to read summer reading books and they get to pick from the list of Kentucky Book Award winners KBA books. Uh, there are 10 of those. So this one is one of them and it's the fantasy book. It's the only fantasy one on the KBA list. So I chose it as my book obviously and I have to be able to lead a discussion on it when school starts back with students who read it over the summer. So I have to actually read this book very thoroughly and also write notes in the margins and you know come up with discussion questions which there are really not any online because I looked. Also, if you look at the pages, can you see this? The margins are really small and like the, they, the words just go really far across the page. <laughs> so this is actually a really long book. I know they can't make it look too long because you know, kids would not want to read it. I mean, it's only like 340 pages or something. Um, but yeah, it's gonna take a little time for me to read this, but I do have to read it for school. So I will be reading it. I've heard that the fantasy world building is amazing and I can already see that because it just jumped right into the plot in these first 20 pages. I mean, it just, there was no, let's, oh, let's get to know the characters first. Or all, no, no, it was like, let's talk about the magic and let's talk about the world. And I feel like I already know a lot of this world in only 20 pages. It is immersive and I can see why people said that. So far, it is one of the better young adult fantasies that I've ever read and I'm only 20 pages in. So fingers crossed that this goes really well. So those are all the books that I read in June and the ones I hope to read in July. Maybe I'll get to more, maybe less. So I can't imagine DNFing any of these books, but I guess you never know, we'll see. I mean, so far, all three of the ones I'm in the middle of, you know, that I just showed you that I've at least started, I think I'm gonna see them all through. So fingers crossed I can read all three of them before I go back to school. Alrighty, well, I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching, bye.